Yo, what is up? It's your boys that are back with part two of the What If Deku Could Quick Save. Last video definitely ended up getting a lot of support, and I'm pretty grateful for that. And we had basically left off with Deku getting his quirk, Deku uh, figuring out that uh, uh, he had quick save. Deku would have actually went back in time, uh, not back to his point that he had saved in time, and retrained his body harder this time. So at this point, Deku has 60% of one for all mass access to. Did I say 80 or 60%? Uh, I'm just going to give him 70. Let's say 70. He has 70% of one for all at this point, right? And Deku had actually just finished taking the UA exam. And it had been about a week. And Deku has actually gotten into... Uh, what's it called? Deku's actually gotten into the little UA. He took the little uh, quirk test. And yeah, Deku did pretty well on that. Also, before I continue with the story, I just want to really, really change my mind. Uh, briefly say something. In this version, Todoroki will actually be gender bended, and it's gonna be a girl. The name that I chose is gonna be Emiko Todoroki. And uh, you're probably wondering, why'd you choose Emiko Todoroki? Well, uh, I don't know, man. That's just the first name that popped up, and that's something that I could probably stick with. So, when, in terms of that, that's gonna be the name. So, after Deku basically did the exam, he would have basically been walking home, and this is when he would see a girl with blue and a uh, brown eye. He would look at her and say, wow, like, that's the girl that got a very good score on the test. She has ice powers. And Deku would be a little interested in her since, uh, you know, she's a little bit of a baddie. I was like, she's a little bit of a baddie. But, uh, yeah. Okay. So, after that, Deku would basically just go home and have, like, a little bit of a thought about her. This is when Deku would basically show up for school the next day. And this is when All Might would bust in the room telling them that they're gonna be taking Heroes vs. Villains exam where uh, the matches are gonna be as goes. Bakugo, oh wait, no, 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 no. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that yet, but after this, all of the kids would basically essentially be told to put on their costumes and All Might would show them all to what their costumes could be. Deku's costume, well, actually, what should Deku's costume be? I mean, he has the power to quick save, so what would I give Deku? Deku would have... Uh, I don't want to give him the same costume as he can, and it's kind of trash. Deku would have that same costume, basically. No bunny ears, no smile. It would be like an updated version of what he has now, except no little... no gadgets, since he doesn't really need gadgets as much as he does in the original. So, like, no, like, titanium... I mean, uh, no, like, steel boots or something like that. And uh, what's it called? Deku suit wouldn't actually be green. It'd be uh, sort of. It'd be black. I thought that black suit would be black. And uh, yeah, that's basically how it goes in terms of the suit. Now they would all arrive outside, and this is when All Might would begin to tell them what their pairings and teams are going to be. Deku would be put on a team with uh, Fumiko Todoroki. Or wait, what was the name that I chose again? Emiko Todoroki. Sorry about that. He'd be put with Emiko Todoroki, and Deku would basically look at her and say, huh, I'm pretty excited about this. So, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there. I don't want Todoroki to have that burn mark if it's going to be a girl, so I'm erasing that. Not happening. No scar on the face. Uh, when that happened, Todor uh, uh, sh what was it called? Endeavor actually ended up saving her. He basically pushed out of the way and was like, You damn woman, how dare you do this? And basically took her to the mental hospital, which was like, again... And yeah, that's basically what we're going to be doing. So, Deku would proceed to basically just be like, uh, hey, like, what's your name? She'd be like, oh, my name's uh, Emiko Todoroki. What about yours? And Deku would say, oh, my name's uh, Izuku Midoriya. She'd say, nice to meet you. And the pairings would be as goes. Todoroki, I mean, not Todoroki, Emiko Todoroki, Bert, and, uh, and Izuku versus Bakugo and Uraraka. Yep. Bakugo and Uraraka is not going to be a shit, by the way. That's just what I want to do. <sighs> oh, my bad. I'm about to get a drink of water real quick. <sighs> Much better. Now, oh, yeah, that's revitalizing. Anyways, so this is when uh, Deku would proceed to be like, well, what's the plan? And Uraraka would see Deku with a... Uh, sh uh, Emiko Todoroki, and she would be a little bit of jealous. She'd be like, I was supposed to be with him. 
and she'd basically go inside with Bakugo. Now, for the time being, Deku would end up just talking to Emiko Todoroki, and they would begin to have a little conversation. Deku would ask her, you know, what's her, what are her capabilities, and she would tell him that she has ice and fire, and Deku would tell him, you have ice and fire? He would begin to ask her why she didn't use that during the little test, and she would say, it's uh, personal reasons, I don't really want to talk about it. Deku would basically understand that she doesn't want to talk about it, so he would understand and not pry about it. Now, this is when they would basically proceed to go inside, but this time, Emiko Todoroki would proceed to freeze the building just like usual, and Deku would be pretty amazed by her abilities. This is when her and Izuku would actually both walk in there, and Deku would tell her that he's fine under those conditions. I mean, his training is uh, revolves around very, very, very uh, powerful means. So this is when they would essentially begin to walk in. Now when they're walking in, Deku would get a little cold admittedly, but he'd just kind of like rub it off and be like, ah, whatever. Now this is when they would find the room with the bomb and Bakugo would come in bursting flying trying to take out Deku. Deku would grab him by the head and slam him into the wall and Bakugo would get knocked out on impact. This is when Emiko would look at him and be like, holy shit, this kid is strong. And Deku would look at her and smile and say, well, let's keep going. And she'd say, uh, yeah, definitely. Now, this is when they would meet her a rocket by the bomb. And she'd be like, uh, 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 I, I surrender. Before Deku and Todoroki could have used their quirks and they would have won. Emiko would basically proceed to walk up to the bomb and she would basically touch it, making the hero team win. So after this, the rest of the matches would go as in canon. And as soon as the day was over, Deku would walk up to her and say, hey, so, uh, what is, uh, hey, so I actually, like, really, ah, what, what would Deku say? What would this Deku say? Deku would proceed to walk up to Emiko and be like, hey, you want to, uh, talk after, after that little exam? And she'd say, uh, yeah, sure. This is what Deku would say, I'm, all right, for sure. And he's like, let's go get something to eat. And she'll basically agree to it. She'll be like, but you're paying. They could say, of course, as he laughs and, you know, roughs up his hair. Now, they would proceed to walk over somewhere. And this is when Deku would proceed to ask her about, you know, who she, who she is and how she is as a person. He would ask her, like, hey, like, so what, what, what can you tell me about yourself? And she'd proceed to tell him that uh, her name, you know, she'd be like, I don't really like a lot of things. And Deku would proceed to tell her that his quirk is... Uh, Quirk is a strength-based quirk, since not a lot of people actually know that Deku has the quicksave quirk. He just kind of shows it off as a strength quirk, since he doesn't want anybody to know that he has that ability. So this time, Deku would uh, just kind of have that as a secret. Okay. After this, Deku would look at her and be like, so, what can you tell me about yourself? And she'd say, well, like I already said, I have fire and ice quirk. And Deku would proceed to ask her, so, why don't you use your fire quirk? And she would begin to say, because I don't want to use that damn old man's quirk. And Deku would say, old man? He's like, uh, who? And she would tell him that she's actually Endeavor's daughter. Now, this is when Deku would hear that and be like, you're Endeavor's daughter? She'd say, like, yeah, what's the deal? And Deku would say, that's the number two hero. Like, isn't, isn't it amazing to have the number two hero as your father? And she'd say, it's a curse. Deku would proceed to be like, curse? And ask what she means. She would proceed to tell him that, you know, ever since she can remember, Endeavor's been nothing but a jerk. And that he basically was treating her as growing up. After hearing this, Deku would proceed to get angry and be like, what the hell? That scumbag is allowed to be a hero after all that that he did to you? And she'd say, yeah, nobody ever really speaks up about it, so he's just kind of allowed to keep doing whatever he does. So when Deku would be like, ah, oh, I see. They proceed to keep eating, and this is when they would actually order what they want. Deku, Todoro Deku would actually order the thing that Todoroki was going to get. I mean, yeah, Todoroki. I could still call her that, technically, since that's still the last name. Deku Todoroki would go and she'd say, yeah, I want that too. And Deku would smile, being like, wow, you like that too? And she'd say, yeah, it's my favorite. Now, this is when they would basically just proceed to just talk a little more and get to know each other just a little bit more before basically just going off and, uh, you know, just going on their separate ways. No, 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 not their separate ways. Deku would proceed to actually 
walk her home. He would take her to the Todoroki residence, and this is when he would just leave her off. She would thank him for, you know, being kind to her and, you know, doing all that. And Deku would be like, yeah, of course, anytime. Deku would proceed to go home and be like, well, she was definitely interesting. And uh, she would go inside and be like, she would go inside. What's it called? She would actually go inside and kind of blush and think that that kid was actually kind of cute. And Deku would walk home a little excited for me. This is when Deku would be like, ah, I was an idiot on that date. And Deku would proceed to go back before he asked, redo that entire thing, and get an even better impression. So this time, when he actually ended up dropping her off, she proceeded to basically, like, ask him if he could stay around a little longer. Deku would smile and be like, yes. And this is when they would actually proceed to hang out at Shoto's house. Wait, no, not, not Shoto. I mean, uh, at, to at uh, yeah, at her house. After hanging out there, Deku would basically be like, so, uh, what do you got to do here? And they would begin to watch movies, and they would begin to just get a little, you know, flirtatious, and, you know, do, do the average shit. So, when out of nowhere, uh, Deku and her would begin to watch a movie, and they were actually about to do a naughty naughty, but out of nowhere, one of her siblings comes in, and she's like, Hey, uh, Emiko, do you have a second? And she would see Deku in there. And Deku would be like, oh, this is not okay. This one she would say, who are you doing here? And she'd begin to yell at Emiko. And she'd be like, you know you're not supposed to have any guys in the house. And she'd be like, oh, crap. This one Deku would be like, yeah, not having this. And he would proceed to go back before that could happen. And he would proceed to just be like, nah, I actually got to go home. As much as he, you know, enjoyed that situation, he decided that, you know, keeping his life was a little more important than, you know, watching a couple movies together. So Deku would proceed to basically just go home after taking her there. He had the experience, boys, don't worry. And he made sure that it was the same date and everything. So, yeah, that's basically what ended up happening. At the end of it, Shota actually ended up really, 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 really liking uh, Deku. So Deku, you already know, he, he really out here. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically what essentially happened when, when it comes to that. Now, next day would come around, and this is when they would be informed about the USJ. They'd be told about it and basically just be informed that they're going to just basically have a little hero training with, uh, with a 13 at the USJ. They would arrive on the bus, and this one Suyu would actually point out that Deku's quirk is very similar to All Might. So she has almost the same amount of strength as All Might has, and she would be going to tell them that Deku's very, very strong. This is what Deku would basically get get a little excited and like, get happy because, you know, if they're comparing him to All Might, it has to be for a reason. So Deku would proceed to just kind of smile and say, Ah, oh, yeah, I can see why you think that. A lot of people actually thought that my quirk is very similar to his for quite a while and I can definitely see why it's strength based after all and they would uh, begin to just talk about it for a little longer the rest of these kids in the bus would basically just tell Deku about how awesome it must be to have all my little strength and Deku would say that it really is now this one they would arrive 13 would give her speech Shota would tell them to go inside and this one Kurogiri would arrive he would begin to teleport everybody away and this is when Deku, Mineta, and Asui would be on the boat after Asui had actually saved them. Deku, without hesitation, would tell Asui to grab, to jump in the air, and use her tongue to catch him as soon as he does what he's about to do. Deku would jump up into the air and shoot a smash into the water. And the water would have the same effect as before. Mineta would proceed to be like, you're so cool, Deku, and have the same reaction that he did in Canada. Deku after this would basically just be chilling and be like, ah, I mean, I guess I, I am awesome. And that's basically what would go down when it comes to that. Now, in terms of, uh, what is it called? In terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, what am I trying to say? In terms of the Shigaraki and Aizawa moment where uh, Aizawa was basically getting his shit bashed in by the gnome. Deku would have actually arrived there and begin to hit the Nomu away after that. After this, Deku basically ends up punching the Nomu and it ends up flying back a bit, taking a little bit of the shock from the punch. 
and Shigaraki's face would go from one to happiness and joy to one of worry and like anger. This is when Deku would be like, I don't know what you are, but I gotta destroy you. And this is when Deku would proceed to fight the gnome. Now when he's fighting, Deku would actually accidentally get hit by one of the gnome's blows and it would end up fracturing a couple of his ribs. Deku would take note of this and would go back to previously before he got hit in the ribs and would basically proceed to dodge every blow. Things like that would continue to happen with the Nomu act actually landing some attacks on Deku and Deku having to go back to the point before he was hit and uh, react better in the second opportunity that he had. So this actually ends up being very broken in terms of you can't hit me type shit and Deku would proceed to actually in the end end up punching the Nomu in the brain. It's when the Nomu's brain would splatter everywhere and it would fall unconscious. As it happens, All Might would bust in and save a couple kids like he did in Kent. And Shigaraki would be like, no, he cheated. I didn't know that there was somebody this strong. And, um, what is it called? And Deku would be like, well, you should have thought twice before coming here. This is when Deku would begin to rush at Shigaraki. And without a second thought, Deku would punch Shigaraki, slamming him straight out of the USJ. Now, when this happens... Shigaraki would be blasted right right through everything and Deku would have basically paralyzed him. Now after that happened, Shigaraki actually ends up getting taken away by the custodies and Kurogiri is escaping with a couple of the members that he still had. With this in mind, this creates another story for me to write. <laughs> now after seeing this, Bakugo would have arrived and seen what Deku had done and gone angry. Been like, Oh, why does this nerd always so much stronger than me? Why can't I seem to catch up to him? And this is when Bakugo would go on a search for power. You guys know where I'm headed with this. Bakugo would decide that he's had enough of being second to Deku. And that he's going to become... He, if he can't be this first num the number one hero, then he's going to become the number one villain. Before anything had happened, he would proceed to go up to one of the random villains and ask them where where their base is and he would tell them that he's gonna blow their faces off the listing too now after hearing this the little thug would basically proceed to get terrified of him and answer his question telling him that he doesn't know but he found him in a sort of alleyway Bakugo would proceed to act as a little bit of a double agent and act like he's doing just fine like his usual self but he would actually be trying to find the League of Villains base whenever he was out of class one day, however, Bakugo would have been just wandering around, and this is when he would actually, out of nowhere, bump into a man. This man would be the recruiter for One for All, and uh, Bakugo would begin to tell him that he wants to join the League of Villains. Now, he would ask him, why would somebody like you want to join? Then he would flash his quirk and tell him, because I want power. He would show him to One for All, and One for All would actually take a, all for one, would take a liking to Bakugo. He would like the way that he wants power, the way that he he carries himself. He would enjoy that and decide that since Shigaraki was taken away, he may be an even better an even better successor for him. That as much as he liked the Tomura thing, this boy may have exactly what he's looking for. This is when All for One would basically offer him power for his loyalty and to betray UA and give him all sorts of information. Kind of get close to All Might and try to see what he can pick up on him. So in terms of that, Bakugo ends up being the, the spy for UA, you can say. Bakugo would actually end up giving getting a fire manipulation quirk and would actually get handed a, a quirk enhancer, making his explosions almost like nukes. One day, Bakugo would actually just be messing around with his quirk when he would actually show off a little bit and, and Deku would notice that something's a little off. Bakugo seems way stronger than what he had originally thought he was. And Deku would proceed to be like, What's, where'd you get all that power from, Bakugo? And Bakugo would actually not want to respond. He would kind of just pretend as if nothing's going on. So Deku wouldn't really pry too hard about this, but he would be a little suspicious of Bakugo's newfound power. Deku would actually decide to do a little something about it. Deku would proceed to, to essentially, uh, what's it called? <clears throat> Deku would proceed to essentially 
uh, try to find what Bakugo's been up to. But every time he follows him, Bakugo catches on to it. Kind of acts like a normal self. So this makes Deku kind of have his suspicions canceled. Who has no reason to not trust Bakugo. So Deku just kind of leaves it at that. We're going to go ahead and jump into the UA Sports Festival. In terms of that, Deku arrives with the race. It basically comes down to Deku slaughters the race. Like he, he obliterates everyone. Emiko actually had a fighting chance. She was in third place. Bakugo was in second and Deku was in third. This enraged Bakugo and actually made him decide to do something a little rash after this. What's it called? Yeah. In terms of cavalry battle, the team would basically be Deku Uraraka, Emiko Todoroki, and Mei Hatsune. Some of the boys in Class 1A would actually be going to get jealous and be like, damn, this kid is good. Like, He has all those girls on his team. And uh, the boys would be very jealous. I'm just going to throw that out there. They'd be pretty jealous of Deku. I mean, he's really out here. He got three females on his team. Deku would proceed to body the competition. I mean, 70% one for all. What are you going to do to that? And uh, yeah, that's basically how that little thing goes down. If you guys hear my dog barking, I'm sorry about that. She just started going crazy. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys can still watch the video and not get too uh, annoyed by it. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Guys, hold on. I'm going to see if I can maybe get her to calm down. Okay, guys. I think I managed to get her to be a little quiet. But uh, yeah, I'm back. And uh, in terms of uh, what's called the fights, Deku would have actually been put up against Shinso. That would essentially go the same with Shinso catching him and Deku flicking his finger. He would actually end up breaking it. And this time, Deku would actually go back to before the match started. Never respond to Shinso and would take him out essentially as quick as possible. Shinso would get a little enraged by this, by the fact that he couldn't show anything off. And he would gain a little bit of hatred towards Deku. Deku would be a little confused by why he hates him so much, but Deku wouldn't really pay too much attention. After this, Deku would have to fight Emiko, and he would basically take it easy on her. He would speed blitz her as fast as possible, using all of one. He would push himself to use 75%, and almost in an instant, Deku would blitz Emiko and taking her right outside of the arena. She would begin to be like, ah, and, get, and just think, I guess it can't be helped. This kid is way too strong. So, Deku would end up winning that. When it comes to the Todoroki, I mean to the Bakugo and Deku fight, that, that would go way different. The fight would start off and Bakugo would rush at Deku with a giant howitzer impact. The blasts were almost nuke-like and Deku wasn't expecting what he had came in for. As soon as the match started, Bakugo actually ended up hitting Deku with a giant explosion straight to the face, making Deku get blown and almost fall off of the stage. But this is when Deku would basically punch towards the ground and create enough wind pressure to send him flying. Deku would arrive back on the ring in a sort of superhero way. If you guys get what I mean, it's like he punched the ground and like landed on, on his knees or something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about, that Wonder Woman pose. And uh, Deku would proceed to start fighting with Bakugo in hand to hand. Bakugo would be fairing very well since uh, with the enhancer, he actually basically has 20% of one for all strength within himself at the moment. Deku would be having a, a very hard time against Bakugo. Bakugo would be using his explosions left and right, catching Deku off guard. But Deku would get hit and basically use his quirk to go back before he could and essentially dodge all of his blows. The real battle would have gone a lot different with Bakugo landing lots of hits and hitting him off guard with lots of explosions since that's just the kind of person that Bakugo is. During the fight, Bakugo would have been enraged over and over. He never managed to land a single attack. Everything he ever tried, Deku just seems to be one step ahead of him. And this would push him over the edge. Bakugo would essentially, after almost winning, would proceed to just blast onto the ground and destroy the entire arena. Deku would actually get caught, caught off guard by that, but jump into the air. And this is when Bakugo would say, I'm done with this. He would then essentially walk off the arena and leave. After that happens, Deku would be crowned as the winner. Bakugo would second, but he wouldn't be there. So he would just be told that he's second and Emiko would be third. And in terms of what happens next, you guys are going to have to stick around and find out. So that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the second part. So what if Deku had quick save? And uh, with that being said, Zether out.
Peace.